Hi, I'm Leo. I'm the guitarist for the Tongue Ensemble. I'm also the co-founder of my production studio, Sodot, and I'm in a band called Finger Funk. Today I've been given two pipa pieces and only 15 minutes to rework and adapt onto my guitar. And with that, welcome to Tongue Backstage. So I've arranged and composed pieces for the Tongue Ensemble and many other contemporary acts before. So this itself was a different sort of challenge. I'm definitely looking forward to it. This piece is called Shu Mi and Mai Fu, which I've heard from my friends that it's the most popular and the most famous pipa piece of all time. I guess the first thing is the, the pipa itself has a different set of tuning from the guitar. So a lot of the voicings that I will kind of have to be using will, will kind of have to kind of simulate what a pipa would sound like. Other than that, the right hand technique, a lot of it actually resembles very classical kind of playing. Like Spanish classical players will probably find this not that different. <laughs> playing a lot of double notes which in this case I'm playing like A, A, A and then E, E, E which is what a pipa player would sound like because they have open strings to do it. My biggest takeaway is that, at least for the little snippet that I've had, it's not exactly a super technical or hard piece to play. Of course, to play it clean, it's one thing, and to play it sloppy, is, of course, is another, which, which I've definitely seen happen before. My friends are very good players. To them, this technique is, this at least this small part, isn't a hard thing to play at all. So much of it is the emotion and how they deliver the piece itself. Second piece is called Semi Rose. It's a pipa piece from the Xinjiang region. My friend who teaches pipa actually told me that this is something that uh, students will kind of have to definitely have to go through. It's one of the pieces that everybody has to play, almost like a rite of passage. My thoughts on the on this piece is that it's actually very close to flamenco classical guitar. The notes played, the, the the movement of the bass and everything, it's very very close to how a classical guitarist would actually play. Of course, the direction of our tremolos and their loon is a totally different thing altogether. From my observation, the pipa and the guitar fundamentally sound very different, right? Um, could you explain why? Okay, if you're comparing it to an electric guitar, then definitely yes. An electric guitar, it's, everything's a bit more compressed. I don't get that kind of dynamic. It's a very different sound altogether. Moving on, if you talk about comparing it to the acoustic or the, the classical guitar, this whole thing is like a sound box. So the, the, the sound kind of vibrates in here, whereas the pipa is just one solid piece over there. Think of an empty box compared to a box or a thinner box that is not that is totally filled or solid. It's a different sound altogether. Their strings are actually a lot easier to bend. As compared to if you try and bend a like an acoustic guitar, not that it's not possible. It's a lot easier on a pipa actually. That's why they, they have this kind of vibrato. Pipa they have kind of raised frets. But generally a normal acoustic guitar would be like that, kind of almost flat. Uh, with a slight uh, um, height over there. Because of all this, the, the combination of just the body, the tuning, the strings, it just creates a whole different thing altogether. This is it for today's episode of Turn Backstage. Let us know what you'd like to see next in the comments below.